Welcome in everyone. Today, we're um, really diving deep into a topic that I think is very relevant to a lot of our listeners. It's the intersection of autism, pregnancy, and childbirth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hear a lot about, you know, parenting with autism. Right. But we specifically wanted to look at the other side of that coin, which is, you know, the experiences of autistic individuals going through pregnancy themselves. Yeah. And the source that we're looking at, Cheap ABA Autism, Pregnancy and Childbirth, what you need to know mm. um, really digs deep into this, I think. Yeah, it's an important perspective and one I think that often gets missed. You know, like you said, we talk so much about neurodiversity in children, which of course is important, but we kind of forget that adults go through these huge life stage transitions too. And pregnancy, you know, is like the definition of a massive change. Absolutely. And then you add in the sensory experiences, the social aspects, the communication styles that are often common with autism. It just, it brings a whole other layer of things to consider, doesn't it? It really does. And the source actually starts with a really powerful anecdote huh? about this woman, Sarah, who's about to become a mom. Oh, okay. And she talks about how just going to her OBGYN appointments felt like this sensory minefield for her. Mm. Like the bright lights, the cold paper on the table, even just the smell of antiseptic in the air. It was so overwhelming for her that she really struggled to communicate effectively with her doctor mm -hmm. about, you know, her actual concerns about the pregnancy. Yeah, and you know, that story, it really highlights what I was saying earlier about sensory sensitivity not just being a dislike, right? It's for a lot of autistic individuals, it's a full body experience, you know, yeah. a smell that might be like kind of unpleasant to you or me could feel like a physical assault to someone else. And then imagine that, but amplified because you're pregnant and everything's already heightened. It's like, you know, how some people love the smell of fresh cut grass and it's like invigorating for them. Right. And then other people, it's just like way too much, same stimulus, completely different experience. Exactly. Now, layer on the hormonal changes, the anxieties about having a baby, mm. and you can start to get a sense of what someone like Sarah might be going through. Yeah. And it's not just the physical sensations either, mm. right? The source makes a really good point about how, for a lot of autistic people, routine and clear communication are super important. Right. And pregnancy can throw routine out the window. And then you've got the medical world, which is, you know, famous for jargon, rushed appointments, all that, it can be really difficult to navigate. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, if someone already has trouble advocating for themselves at like a regular doctor's appointment, yeah. imagine how much harder that becomes when you're already dealing with this emotional and physical roller coaster of pregnancy. For sure. And the source actually uses a term here. Have you ever heard of the double empathy problem? I have, yeah. It's a really interesting way of framing that communication breakdown that can happen between, you know, neurotypical individuals and people with autism because both sides might be misinterpreting cues, you know, social cues, communication styles. It can lead to a lot of frustration just like not understanding each other. So like in Sarah's case, maybe her doctor just thought she was a little anxious, mm. you know, but didn't realize that the sensory overload was actually preventing her from really processing the information and like advocating for what she needed. Exactly. And that's where I think having those support strategies in place can become really, really critical. It feels like, you know, we talk about support systems, but they're not really designed with like yeah. this specific experience in mind, you know? Right. And I think what's great about this source is, yeah, it does point out the problems, but it also offers some solutions. Yeah. Like it doesn't just say this is broken. It says, here are some things we can try to fix it. Okay. So let's get into those. Like, what are some of the key takeaways here for making this whole experience more positive, more manageable for autistic individuals? Well, they really emphasize the need for like individualized care plans, right? Okay. So we were talking about Sarah and the sensory overload at the doctor's office. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if her doctor had known that ahead of time. Right. Right? They could have dimmed the lights, let her wear maze canceling headphones, maybe scheduled her appointment for a less busy time. Simple things. Yeah, it's like proactive instead of reactive exactly. right exactly and i like that the source it doesn't just say like oh we need to improve communication <laughs> it actually gives really practical tips like using visual aids oh for sure for sure or like you know plain language checklists so that it's not all just verbal visual learning can be so powerful for people and checklists are huge because it gives you that sense of like structure progress yes when everything else feels out of control totally and there's this whole other piece about support networks yeah that i think is so important here and it's not just on the individual right right it's partners 
family members, friends, online communities. Everyone has a role to play. Totally. It's like building this web of understanding advocacy. Like the source mentions this woman whose doula was actually trained in autism awareness. Wow. And that doula was able to be this bridge between the woman and the medical staff during labor, advocate for her needs, made a huge difference in her experience. That's amazing. Just that little bit of like, you know, awareness and training can have such a ripple effect. Huge. And, and you know, it's not just about practical stuff either, right? It's emotional support. Mm. The source talks about therapy, counseling, and having it be tailored to this specific experience. Oh, mental health is so huge. And it's often the thing that gets overlooked, you know? Right. Because pregnancy, it's emotional for anyone, mm. right? The hormones, all of it. But if you're someone who processes emotions differently already, having that support is, like, non-negotiable. And the source actually brought up some, like, kind of startling statistics about this, right? Yeah. Wasn't it something like autistic women are way more likely to experience anxiety, depression during pregnancy? Yeah, yeah. They cited like a 40% chance, which is much higher than the general population. Right. And that's not to scare anyone, but it's to highlight like, we need to take this seriously. You know, we need to have good resources, accessible mental health care. We need to be proactive about this. Right. Like this isn't just about, you know, making things more comfortable. It's about addressing like a real need here. It yeah. makes you wonder how many people are we failing kind of inadvertently because we just haven't adapted our approach. It's a huge question, right? And this source would say we need to be doing better. Like we can't just keep using a one size fits all approach. We need flexibility. We need understanding. Yeah. It has to be built into the systems we already have. Yeah, it's not about creating a separate system for autistic people. Right. right. It's about making the existing one work for everyone. And that goes back to that that phrase that they used. Autism informed care. Exactly. And it's not just one thing. It's the practical changes. It's the communication adjustments. It's the support networks. It's all connected. It's multifaceted for sure. Yeah. And honestly, I think the most important thing is remembering that autism is a spectrum. What works for one person might not work for another. So we have to be willing to listen and adapt. That's key. So much of it boils down to empathy, uh, doesn't yeah. it? Really trying to understand what it's like to go through pregnancy with such different needs and experiences. Absolutely. We can't just assume everyone experiences the world the same way. Something that feels like a small adjustment to you or me, that can make a huge difference for someone else. This has been really eye-opening, honestly. I hadn't really thought about a lot of this before. It's amazing what you learn when you really dive into these topics. Right. It yeah. is. And it just makes you think, like, how much better could we be doing in all areas of life if we just adopted that that autism informed lens? Exactly. So as we wrap up here, what's the one thing you hope our listeners take away from this conversation? Hmm. I hope they come away from this with more empathy, of course, but also with this sense of like, OK, what can I do? How can I help create a world where everyone feels seen and heard and supported? especially during these huge life transitions. That's a great goal. Lots to think about, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep asking those questions, keep learning, and keep challenging those assumptions.